Hello all. This video is entitled Paranoia or Prejudice. Now I have been in a situation where I feel like I have been discriminated against. But it gets tricky because I also have been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder one of the symptoms of which is paranoia. So, I've been in a situation where discrimination has caused stress, which has caused paranoia, which has caused further stress, which has caused further discrimination. And I'm the kind of person where I really don't like to judge other people because I know how dangerous judgment is. I mean, Scripture says, judge not lest you be judged. So <laughs> I don't like to judge. So I'm quick to say, oh, I've just been paranoid this whole time. They didn't discriminate against me. But from the time that I entered into this scenario, guys... All eyes are on me. They were looking at my YouTube channel. <laughs> like I would post things on my YouTube channel, and I get and I and I and I I get this vibe like they're looking at my YouTube stuff. You know, I mean, it really was like Big Brother, man. It was kind of like 1984. It was, it was eerie, man. It was an eerie situation. And I really felt like I was under surveillance and scrutiny. But those are the very sensations that you have when you are paranoid, you know? So it was just, it was, it was trippy. It was like, it was a trippy experience because the very sensations that you have when you're paranoid, they were creating out of their stigma against people with severe and persistent diagnoses. So they had this stigma against, I guess, an individual was schizoaffective, thinking, God, this guy, what, what's, his, what's going on with him? Is he dangerous? Ugh. And that stigma caused him to put more scrutiny on me and caused him to put me into a state of eerie surveillance. And then... I feel like surveilled, you know, which is going to make me feel a little paranoid, like, who's watching me? Where's Big Brother? The World Health Organization is going to give us fake food. Oh, you know, I mean, it was crazy. And I just, at, at some point, I was like, I, I, I'm not going to endure in this, you know? And it, it, it just was, the whole thing just didn't seem worth it at all. I was like, this is crazy, man. Whatever. And that's what it's like for people living with severe and persistent mental illness. It's like, people want to act like they're kind. People want to act like they have all this concern for your well-being, they want to act like they're, they're so concerned about you, but they're really about protecting their organizations from lawsuits, and they're really about protecting their people from your dangerous, mentally ill craziness. And this kind of bias, guys, it's not just, it's not about, just about mental illness. It's about racism, black, white, red, yellow. I mean, Chinese people in this country get discriminated against like you wouldn't believe. They get discriminated against constantly. And of course, as an African American, I'm not saying that African Americans don't get discriminated against, but Native Americans get discriminated against, Indian Americans get discriminated against, 
Hispanic immigrants get discriminated against. I mean, it's crazy. And then you go to homophobia. I mean, the whole thing is like, you know, there are some people in this country who get discriminated against in sin one way, but yet they don't see that everybody isn't going to have necessarily the same sexual orientation. And that the sodomites in the Bible that, that, Levit that Leviticus is talking about and the other people are talking about are not the same ilk of person as a homosexual or a, or a lesbian coming out of the closet in today's society. It's just not the same thing. So you've got homophobia, which is bias against queers, you know, gays, lesbians, bisexual, transgender, queer, GLBT. We've got racism. We've got stigma, which is which is basically bias against people who've been diagnosed with severe and persistent mental illness. We've got xenophobia, which is bias against immigrants. Guys, all these phobias, all these isms, all these biases have got to go if we're going to make it as a, as a world. These things are directly from the devil. Now, you might judge me with another ism and say, oh, he's a fundamentalist because he said the word devil. Ah, oh, he's in the dark ages. Oh, he's archaic. What's he, doing? What's he talking about the devil for? I mean, he should be talking about, like, our, 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 our neural pathways or neuroscience or our id or our ego, but not the devil. What's this devil talk? Again, that's just another ism, guys. None of us know exactly what's going on. Life is a mystery. God is a mystery. Guess what? We're on a planet that's spinning around and we don't know how we got here. And we can't get off of it without a lot of technology. And we can't get very far at all. We don't know how to make an atmosphere that sustains our life. And we're rooting the atmosphere that we live in. So, we don't have all the answers. None of us. Maybe it would behoove us to humble ourselves and learn from each other. My pastor, who I love, oh, this woman is so awesome, and she's only 30 years old, she once said to me, she said, Woody, to, to love is to learn from another. And that was a little bit of a narrow definition, but I see what she's saying, you know, like, to love someone is to learn from them. And it's, it's a beautiful definition. We've got to learn from each other, guys. If this environment that I got into wanted to really learn from me, it would have been a whole different scenario, but they wanted to contain me. And anyone who watches my videos knows that I'm not very easily contained. <laughs> so I bear them no ill will. I'm not sure if they wronged me or if it was just uh, a fear thing, you know. If they wronged me, I forgive them and I cancel all debts they owe me. If I wrong them, I forgive myself and I forgive all and I cancel all debts I owe them. Because we're all trying the best that we can. We're all trying to get from point A to point B and God understands each and every one of us. But these isms, guys, this, this mental health stigma, this racism, this homophobia, the xenophobia, the sexism, these isms, these phobias, these biases, they've got to go because we're getting more numerous. We're, we're, our technology is advancing and, our, and we're also getting more numerous, meaning that we have to learn how to share space with each other. And we can't allow these fears of one another. And we can't allow these typecast stereotypes of one another to, de to define how we behave with one another. 
We cannot allow it if we're going to survive as a species on this planet. We're supposed to be teaching mammals how not to hunt and eat each other. How can we do that if we ourselves are operating in this one-upsmanship and in this fear-based power play paradigm where we're constantly trying to look for a scapegoat for our unhappiness? It's got to stop, guys. Love is the only way forward. There is no other option besides love. I don't care how smart we get. I don't care how strong we get. I don't care who we scapegoat and get rid of. There is no way forward for us as a culture, as a world culture, and as an earth culture than love and sinful bias and stereotypical understandings of people and racism and classism and homophobia and xenophobia and sexism are not love. End of discussion. And mental health stigma is definitely not love because mental health, mentally ill people are among the most brilliant that I've ever encountered. Listen to one of them one day instead of judge them and you'll know this. So, was it paranoia or was it prejudice? I think it was both. But it taught me the lesson that when I pray, I had better be praying for unity. I had better be praying for humility. And I had better be praying for understanding because we as a culture are getting it wrong too often. This is Captain Kirk, Woodrow Lucas, signing off. Namaste and God bless.